Hello everybody, my name is Simon and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to show you how to do this. So what is this? Well this is a fun little project that I made with Orbits around maybe like two weeks ago and I made it to learn more about uh, sine and cosine. So without further ado, let's get right into it. And as you can see I have made these comments here and these comments explain what the different things in the code do and I will go over them in just a second. But before that, I just want to give a quick shout out to this guy and for making this video. There's a link to this video down in the description too. Uh, but I used this video uh, to learn how Pygame works and I'm very thankful for it, its uh, existence. So yeah, thank you so much for making this video. Help a lot. So I start off by importing math and Pygame. And uh, I think it's obvious why I import Pygame. It's because I use Pi game, uh, but I also import math because I used it down here. Although I'm not quite sure if it's uh, necessary, but either way, I'm using it. Nice. And uh, so yeah, I start off. Uh, well, after I start off by importing everything, I initialize the Pi game modules by typing Pi game dot init. Then I go to define the background color, which is this yes, white color, and the color of the orbits which is just black and then I define the center of the first orbit which coincidentally is uh, right in the middle of the screen as you can see in here but I could define it otherwise so that it, the first orbit is way over here if I wanted to do that how they will behave so the first number here is the diameter then the speed at which they are rotating and then the angle at which they spawn um, relative to the previous or I think, at least I think it's relative to the previous orbits and every row here is a different circle or different orbits so this is the first orbit this is the second orbit and this is the third orbit then I create a variable for the position of the current orbit that I will be calculating later. So when I'm calculating all the orbits and how they should look and behave and drawing them on the screen, I will use this position to kind of save the position but only temporarily. Okay. And then I have the positions variable. So this variable um, is used to store all previous positions of all orbits when they have been calculated and it also gets updated when the position of the orbits change okay and then i have the size of the window so 1000 by 1000 pretty simple then i set the screen to that size then i fill the background of the window with my background color and then i change the caption of the window to video orbits so this is the caption right up here, video orbits. Cool. Then I used to find this dawn equals false and clock equals pi game at time of clock. Detailed explanation of that, or is the explanation at all? Uh, please go watch that tutorial because I don't want to explain something that I have not come up with. Okay. This is also part of that. And then, oops. <laughs> And then here we fill the screen yet again with the background color. Okay, so the reason we filled here and not just up here is because this runs every every frame. Okay, uh, and we don't do not want like let's just delete this for a second. I'll show you how it would be if we didn't do that. So if we didn't have that every frame, every frame, everything that's drawn would just stay on the screen and it will look quite odd. So let's not do that. Uh, yeah. And then we loop through all the defined orbits. So if you remember, the defined orbits are these. These are all the three orbits that we will be using. We could have done more if you wanted, but right now I'm just using three orbits. First we check if the orbit that's currently being calculated is the first orbit, the one that spawns right in the center. So if it 
is that we go right over to the else statement and in here it says that the position of that should be the orbit start pulse which is the one right in the middle of the screen yes okay and then we draw the circle on the screen with the color of the orbit that we defined up there and with the position that we defined here and with the diameter that we defined up here but come to think of that part but when i come to think about it this might actually be the radius so yeah i was actually wrong this uh, up here it's not the diameter it's the radius uh -huh. okay it's important that we actually fix that so it becomes a lot more clear to you what i'm actually doing so here we move the current orbit. So let me show you. So what this does is to basically move this orbit around this orbit. And move this orbit around this orbit that, as I previously said, moves around this orbit. Okay. So I do that by just adding the rotation speed to the spawning angle. So that when it gets spawned or calculated again, it is at a different angle which creates the illusion that it is moving okay then I add the current position to the positions variable so I can like store it okay and uh, yeah now we have gone through the first orbit but what if it's the second orbit or the third or whatever number we uh, can use well this is what happens then and this is kind of the the um, the heart of the whole uh, of the whole script the whole thing so the position is equal to this thing but what do I actually do here well I get the current orbits parent so the parent orbit is Let's say I choose this circle here, or this orbit here. The parent orbit is this large orbit then. Let's say I choose the, um, the smallest orbit, then its parent orbit is this medium orbit. Okay. Yes, yeah, so I get um, that orbit by using the index of the previous entry to the positions variable. Okay. And then. I get the position of the parent orbits, so it's still the position, and then I get the sign, so this is where sign comes in, of the current orbit's starting degree. But this is for the x-axis, and when I'm calculating the y-axis, I'm using the uh, cos function instead, the cosine. Okay, so as I said, I get the sign of the current orbit's starting degree. This is to to transform like the um, degree from 0 to 360 to first into radians and then into uh, something more related to position. But then I get the diameter of the parent's orbit. I mean of the parent orbit, yeah. And then I multiply the results of 3 and 4. So I multiply the sign of the current orbit starting degree by the diameter of the parent's orbit and then I add the result of 2 to the result of 5 so I multiply as I add what I get from multiplying 3 and 4 to the position of the parent orbit so now I have the position of the orbit that I'm currently calculating great Okay, and then everything just works the same as it did with the first orbit. So I draw it, then I rotate it, and then I add it to the positions variable. Okay, so down here I actually clear the positions variable so that the memory doesn't get bloated. Okay, we do not want to store things that we do not need to store. 
See, this is out of this loop. So when this loop is finished, we don't need the information that was used in this loop. Okay. Then I update the display so we actually see what has been calculated. And then this is from the tutorial again that I watched. It has something to do with setting the FPS to 20 FPS. Uh, but as I said before, if you want more information about that, please check out the tutorial down below. Okay. And then when this whole while loop is finished, we just quit the game. And all this creates this nice little loop. On this nice little uh, orbit constellation. So yeah, um, this might not be that interesting visually, um, but I think it's quite interesting uh, mathematically, at least for me, since this was uh, pretty much the first time I used sine and uh, cosine for something productive. So yeah, uh, I hope you learned something new, whether it was uh, programming related or math related. But yeah. Um, this was very fun to make and quite fun to record too, so I hope to make more videos like this. So if you like this, please leave a like and subscribe if you want. If you didn't like it, well then uh, I guess don't subscribe. <laughs> okay, uh, if you have some criticism though, uh, please leave that down in the comments. Okay, uh, I hope to see you again and goodbye.